Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. Today I'm making a jig to be able to hold the rustic flags to put them together. In the beginning, I didn't think I was going to need one because I wasn't planning on making that many flags. But now that I've got several more flags to make, and I've already made quite a few, this jig is a must. Let me show you how we're going to do it. Let's get started. If you're making just one or two flags, this type of arrangement will work well, where I just took two pieces of scrap wood, created a square on my workbench, and be able to secure the flag there. However, if you're planning on making more, then you know, you're going to need to have a dedicated jig. Again, this is another example where I was making a flag, and I use a really crazy clamping system to be able to hold the flag in place. I did have a situation where the wood was warping more than I had expected and I needed to be able to clamp it down. So this is not the ideal situation. So today I'm gonna to make a dedicated jig to be able to secure the flags when I'm assembling them. So it's time to go to the scrap bin, bring in a scrap piece of plywood and be able to make the cut. Now what I'm doing for this I'm cutting it 23 by 40. After cutting that, I need two smaller pieces to be able to create this square on the board. And those are going to be two inches wide. Of course, one of them is going to be 40 inches, and the other one is going to be the 21 inches. And after that, it's time to put the glue and assemble them. And you can see right in the middle, the battery died. And it was time to switch over to the air compressor and continue nailing in these two pieces to create the square. Now I used the framing square to make sure that it was accurate and nice and square. That is critical to be able to make the flag look correct. Here what I'm doing is creating some actual layout lines. I want to know two things. I want to know where my braces are going to be to be able to secure the flag so that the clamps do not get in the way. And I also want to know exactly where my clamps are going to be when I screw that into place. So I did all of the layout lines, and I think that's a very important part, because that will never change. The hold down clamp that I'm going to use for this jig is actually made out of a 2 before, And what I'm going to do is rip this in half so I can get two pieces out of one length of the 2 before. The actual length of the 2 before is not super critical. I'm using 30 inches, and that way I was able to get all six of my clamps out of one 8-foot length of the 2 before. After I have everything cut to length, I just go ahead and rip the 2 befores in half to create my two parts for my clamps. Next, I just take them over to the planer, and I want to clean up the sides so they're a little bit smoother and easier to handle. And of course, it makes it look a little better too. Now the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to put a hole in each end of these cross members to be able to hold a 3 8 inch bolt. They're going to be 1 inch back from the end and of course centered. At the drill press, I went ahead and set up a stop block to be able to allow for my 1 inch setback from the end of my cross member. And the fence keeps the piece dead center. So that way I only have to measure once and all of these holes will be drilled in exactly the same place. So once it's drilled, all I do is just flip it around, drill the other end, and I'll move to the rest of the members. So this doesn't take long at all to be able to do. With all the layout lines completed, all I'm going to do is just go ahead and set these bottom three members in place and get them aligned and then I'm just going to screw them in place. I don't want to use glue here because if something ever happens to these pieces, I want to be able to change them out. I just pulled out my screw bin and wanted to find some screws that would work. And I think those will do just fine. So that's what I'm going to use to be able to screw these members into the bottom of the jig. 
I drilled all the holes and then I'm coming back and just do a little countersink so that these screws heads will be just below the surface of the jig itself. Then I just take the screws, make sure that the cross members are perfectly aligned with all my marks and I screw it into place. Now for the top three members, I need to be able to add about a quarter of an inch to the um, cross members to be able to have the clamping action so that it doesn't hit the bottom side of my jig. So here I'm just cutting a quarter inch piece of plywood to the width of the cross member, which is the inch and a half, and I'm going to staple those with glue onto it. I went ahead and marked the exact layout points where I want this quarter inch plywood to be. Then I just go ahead and apply the glue to the area. And I'm just going to use my old gift card to be able to act as a spreader to get the glue where it's even across the entire surface. And then I'm just going to carefully place it exactly where it needs to be and make sure that it's aligned. And then we're just going to take my Brad stapler and staple it in place. Yeah, I think about four staples ought to be just about right to be able to hold it until that glue sets. And now I'll go ahead and repeat the process for the other two and we'll be ready to put it together and test it out. Now one thing that I did off camera is I put in the T-nuts on the bottom members to be able to accept these bolts. I did just a real quick test fit to make sure that they would screw into the T-nuts. And then after that, off camera, I went ahead and dug through my nuts and bolts and found some washers. Now I've temporarily set a flag into the jig and I want to just be able to test it out and make sure that everything is going to line up correctly and work. And the layout lines that I have will be in the proper place based on what I was originally thinking. So I just wanted to be able to screw it down. One of the important things to note is that the jig is actually a little bit wider than the flag itself. And that's important. So when I put these clamps on, the top of the clamp has a resting point so it doesn't fall through and it aligns exactly where it needs to on the flag. Okay, this shows the completed setup with all the clamps in place. That's going to work out real well. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.